Okay, in this video we're going to talk about this circuit, which is a simple pulse generator, uh, a little oscillator, but has really fast rising and falling edges. And the reason for that is we want to use this circuit to do a very simple time domain reflectometer. Okay, I did a video a couple of weeks ago that showed the basics of a TDR, uh, where you essentially would launch a pulse into the end of an unknown piece of coax, and that pulse would propagate down through the coax, and if the coax was open at the other end, the signal would reflect back, and as it reflects back, it would eventually reach back at the driving point, and if you put a scope here, you could measure the different time difference between when the signal entered and when the reflection comes back, and that time difference was equal to two times the propagation delay. Okay, so uh, and that's how you could determine the length of the coax. And uh, I'll put a link to that video in the notes below this video. But the reason for doing this one and building this circuit here is that uh, your average, you know, inexpensive function generator may not have fast enough edges, okay, to work effectively uh, for this type of application. Because you really want a very fast rising and falling edge here. And uh, so rather than spending a lot of money on a uh, function, a more expensive signal generator with fast edges, here's one you can build for about a dollar, okay, with uh, some junk box parts. You might only have to buy the little inverter here, okay, to give you some nice fast edges. So let's take a look at that circuit. Now if you looked at my previous video, uh, the one I just posted before this one here, we talked about this guy as a Schmidt trigger inverter based oscillator, and that's really all this is. So this happens to be a, uh, oh, let's see, we used a, a 74AC, there it is, 74AC14 Schmidt trigger inverter uh, right here. So this creates an oscillator. It's about a 6 kilohertz oscillator. Frequency is not that important. I wanted something that was relatively slow so we could potentially use this for really long cables where the delay, line, the delay is quite long. Okay, so this is just basically just creating a square wave or near square wave at about 6 kilohertz. Okay, then that goes into the input of the remaining five inverters that are in that same package of this device. They're all essentially running in parallel. I added a 220 ohm resistor in series with each of the outputs so that the overall output impedance is reasonably close to 50 ohms. So not exact, but it's close enough. Okay, and it can also drive a 50 ohm load pretty easily. And also, if the output got shorted or something like that, these resistors are going to protect these things from getting destroyed <laughs> or overloaded. The nice thing about this uh, 74AC14 is the AC Advanced CMOS version has got some pretty fast edges, about 2 nanosecond rise time. Okay, And those fast edges are going to help us to resolve um, you know, what that signal looks like. Okay, And actually, I found that this particular circuit will operate from uh, supply voltage as low as 2 volts and up to about 5. Okay, So let's go take a look at this. So here's the circuit built up here. And I'll, uh, I'll just kind of rotate around here. I'm, I'm shooting this in high definition, so I'm hoping that this will come out uh, a little bit, uh, you know, enough resolution here so you can kind of see the details of how this was built. Okay, let's, maybe we'll go pick this thing up and, and look at it here. Okay. So I just, it's just on a little printed circuit board. You can kind of see the daisy chain of the inputs tied together. Okay, You can see the uh, five 220 ohm resistors that are running from the outputs of each of the inverters uh, up, and up to this, uh, actually a little BNC uh, panel jack. Uh, and then you can see these two components right up front here, with the resistor standing vertically and the uh, 47 nanofarad cap making the oscillator. And that square capacitor laying down there, that's just a decoupling cap for the power supply. Power supply leads coming in from the top here. Okay, So I've got this thing hooked up to a piece of coax right now. That's just going up to the scope. Okay, And then this is what the output looks like. In fact, if we take that signal and we bring it over to a frequency counter, we can see it's right about 6 kilohertz. Again, frequency wasn't, wasn't important. I just picked a couple of values that gave me something that was in that neighborhood. Okay, so let's bring that back over here. Uh, so we plug this on here, looking through the camera instead of at the scope here. So there's uh, the output. And if we speed this up, I'm going to speed this, the sweep speed up on the scope here, okay, and turn the intensity up here a little bit, now I can actually see what that rising edge looks like. Okay, now it's not really clean, it's got some ringing on it, but you know, in a sense, I don't care. 
And the reason for that is because we're going to be using, you know, this rising edge and then the reflection from that edge to show us the length of the coax. And uh, having a little bit of a ring on here makes it easy to identify a particular spot on that edge. So I'm really not too worried about it. So if we look here, I mean, this is at, uh, say, 5 nanoseconds of division. I can see that I'm rising up here in about 2 to 2.2 nanoseconds or so from a 10 to 90 you know, standpoint. So it's a pretty fast edge. Okay. So, uh, so the way we can use this is a TDR. Okay. So let's just, uh, just uh, kind of exchange the, the positions of things here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just disconnect the, uh, the coax from the scope input. And I'm going to take uh, my circuit, and on the back of it, I just have uh, a couple of uh, BNC adapters. And I'm going to connect this end into the scope, and now the coax is just connected to the far end. Okay, so if I bring this over here and connect this up, let's see if I can do this here. Okay, so now that's connected up to the scope. So here's my little very fast edge pulse generator, okay, hooked right into the scope. Okay, and then the other end of that is hooked up to this coax now, which is just you know kind of hanging out, you know, and just hanging out onto the floor. Now, if we look at the, that edge, I can actually see there's my initial rising edge. Okay, when it first sees the 50 ohm coax, we can kind of see that's going on here. That signal is now going down to the end of the coax, reflecting back. And when it makes it back to the input, we get the reflection up here. So, if we simply measure the time delay, oops, let's move that position over here, and I'm just going to use cursors on this scope because I can do that. Now let's measure the time delay it takes. Okay, and that's about 15.7 nanoseconds between that overshoot edge and the reflected overshoot edge coming back. Okay, so if I take that 15.76 nanoseconds, we can apply the math to it and calculate the length of that. Again, this the detail of this is in my previous video, so a quick review here. The signal propagation is about 11.8 nanoseconds per uh, should be 11.8 inches per nanosecond in free space. In typical coax, the velocity factor is 66%, so we're going to be about 7.78 inches per nanosecond. So the way to calculate out the length is we simply take that 7.78 uh, factor, multiply it by our measured value in nanoseconds, and divide it in half, because remember it's a, this, this uh, measurement is round trip, out to the end of the coax, reflect it back. So we just need to cut that in half. So if we take our, our calculator here, and we say, uh, let's see, let me do this, uh, I gotta look at the calculator instead of looking through the camera, 7.78, and we, we measured, what did we measure? 15.76 uh, nanoseconds, okay? So if I take uh, then 15.76, and multiply them together, and divide that by two, we can see our length is about 61 inches, and this piece of coax is indeed a, basically a five foot piece of coax. And that extra inch or so is most likely this extra inch that we're seeing just in this connection here. So that gives me you know, precision down to a, a few inches really, or even maybe less than an inch if we're really careful about the measurement. So uh, that fast edge gives us that ability of making that uh, precision measurement uh, pretty easily. And again, you can build this thing you know, quite easily with uh, you know, a surface mount part, I did it with a through hole part, but just doing a surface mount mounting of it uh, and connecting all the resistors up that way. So, uh, uh, and you can make these measurements on the scope screen. I did it with a set of cursors, but you simply could look and say, well, I'm at 10 nanoseconds of division and count divisions off and get yourself uh, pretty accurate. The nice thing about having the fast edge is that, you know, if that edge was slower, we could see we'd, we'd probably smear through right, right through this. You wouldn't be able to see the reflection very easily. Having a very fast edge, you can kind of separate that out, and it gives you a finer resolution to be able to measure shorter cables and also to get a better resolution to actually get, you know, maybe measure to within an inch or two of final length instead of, you know, a foot or two or a meter or two or something like that. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. And uh, if you want to build this circuit, uh, you know, the schematic is actually, again, pretty simple. You know, just the uh, inverter here, or actually the inverter-based oscillator, and then running in parallel to all of the other inputs. Uh, series resistor to get the output impedance right, parallel everything up to get uh, some good drive impedance, and then right out. And uh, uh, you should, uh, should work just fine, just like I did here. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and maybe go build your own uh, simple fast pulse generator to make your own uh, time domain reflectometer. Uh, thank you for watching.